hello everybody again. There's excitement in our heart because every Saturday we meet our Lord and he's got always news for us. Today, I'd like to pray first for that the Holy Spirit move around us, touching every heart, bringing thoughts, the holy thoughts, holy intentions in our, in our heads. He is good and he, he wants us all to be blessed. And, and he gave me a message and it is called, it's time to come back. God is God knows us. He is everywhere. He knows everything. And he wants us to be sincere. And he made a covenant with Abraham in Genesis 15. And he said to him, when you die, I will take care of your children. And he gave, he gave two promises. The first promise was, you will die at the good old age. It said in Psalms 91 and 16, with a long life, I will satisfy him and show my salvation. Satisfy him. He, he also satisfies us. How every morning he, he gives us his mercy and we, and we might rejoice and be glad all our days. So God didn't forget us in those times and today he is the same. The second promise God says to Abraham, you don't have to be worried about your children. I'm making a covenant with you that your children will come back. There is going to be a comeback. They will come back where I will call them to be, to the land I promised to you and your descendants, your seed in Hebrew term. They will come back with great substance, with great experience that I will use it for my glory. It is written in Exodus 3.21, I will give the people fiber. I will give these people fiber, talking about the Israelites, in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. So the Israelites accumulated great possession. I like to read um, um, Genesis 15. Verse 13 to 16. Verse 13 to 16. Genesis. Chapter 15. 13. It says, well, he, he's doing a covenant with him. And uh, Abraham is like in a trance, but he's... He's aware of all the covenant that God is doing with him. But he says in, in, in verse 13, Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them for 400 years. And so he already knew what was going to happen. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Now, as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at the good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet completed. So God fulfilled this prophecy in, in the Israelites with the 10 plagues. And also, we know in, in other chapters that the son of Abraham, Isaac, um, Jacob, they all have a beautiful, peaceful death. 
full of ages, full, full of dice, no sicknesses, no sudden death, no, nothing like that for them. So God promises, and that's what will happen. Now, today, God is also speaking to us, his children. He called them, he said they will come back. So this invitation of come back is also for us today. God who knows everything. And Pastor Jose just mentioned about uh, um, there's a people suffering. And we know that there's a lot of suffering up there. Caught in problems, caught in debts, caught in sicknesses, caught in their families, relationship, marriage breaking down, many other problems. And God is aware of all that. And he is inviting us to come back to him. He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to fix. He is expert. He orchestrates plans and ways, and, uh, and the people will come back to him. That is our God. No. Excuse me. Um, God's grace enables us to believe in him who created us. So if he, he say, you come back, we must believe and obey. Bible says in Psalms 50, 15 verse, call upon me in the days of your trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. I encourage you, friends, that when we make our prayers to him, he, he will hear us and comfort us as, as, ever, as our natural mom and dad does it in this world, bringing us joy into our lives. How much more our Heavenly Father? Now, To know about more about his love and power, God selected a few chapters for me to read scriptures in Second Samuel 14, 14. I'm going to read that verse. Second Samuel 14, 14. It says, for we will surely die and become like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Yet God does not take away life, but he devises means so that his vanished ones are not expelled from, expelled from him. What a, what a heart of God. Well, no. Um, so we see what was scattered will be brought back. What do we mean by this? That God, with God, everything is possible. I, I like you to imagine this. When we spill milk, for sure something is going to happen. And God devises incredible ways. He regathers, brings to his original condition. He rebuilds our lives. He renews all that is broken or damaged. He restores what is broken. He refreshes like a cold shower in the hot days when we receive his revelation. When he, when he visits us. I believe the Lord is saying to every one of us here now, I'm devising a plan to bring you to wholeness, to bring in the spirit of come back. So he's really 
pushing us that we must not delay. Hallelujah. There's another one in the book of Job 14. Job 14, verse 7, 8, and 9. Let's read it. It says, For there is a hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its roots might grow all in the earth, and its stem might die in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will build and bring forth branches like a plant. That water is, is speaking the uh, Holy Spirit. Life, water is life. Have you ever noticed or um, um, every cities, big cities, small cities, uh, villages, they always been built next to the water, around the rivers. Have you noticed that? It's a whole big cities, in, you know, Paris and London, all those places are built, the big rivers crosses the city. Uh, so water is life to us. And um, when a tree falls, it falls, it can spread again, we say. This is precisely the point of Isaiah. We read in Isaiah 6.13, the prophecy of the house of Jesse. This is Israel. Will be cut off as, we, as one mighty cut down great oak tree. But in God's great mercy, that tree will sprout new growth. The holy seed is in the stem. That new growth is the beautiful branch we read in Isaiah 11.1, 1, the Savior, the King, whose name is Jesus. In the verse, in verse 9, is when, when we speak about the water, the Bible speaks that there is a river that shall make one glad again. If you can reach that water, the Lord will take care of you. It is a river flowing that creates a comeback. River that leads to life. You can read in Psalm 46, 4, and as a reference to that, Ezekiel, book of Ezekiel 47, 1 to 12. I encourage you to read that at, at home. A very interesting, long verses. Um, talks about healing, waters, healing waters, and trees. This water becomes a river of healing and a, and a source of abundant life for everything and everyone. Along the banks of the river grows kinds of trees that gives fruits for food, and their leaves are a medicine. Revelations 22, one, 1 and 2. This image of living waters, Jesus also used in his ministry in the New Testament scriptures for the life he gave to those who will believe in him. That's written in John 4:14. As we see, our Lord has incredible ways to produce a comeback for us. Our lives are restored to our heavenly standards, back to righteous life. So we must not delay. When we 
are in situations like this, what do we do? We grab on the promises of God. Watch this. The prodigal son. Luke 15, 20. It, it, in the Bible says, and he arose. Other, other Bible says, um, he came to his senses or oh, he repented. He arose and came towards his father. When he was a great far off, the fact is he was a very long way. Just the, mo just the moment that you turn back to God, just the fact that you are listening this message, you sitting in the church today, this has been into the plan in the plan of God. The Bible says he saw and ran to him and fell on him and kissed him. The father's kiss speaks of total forgiveness for anyone who comes back to him with a genuine repented heart. If you just turn back to the Lord, all things, all good things will happen to you. Fiber of God, grace will kiss you, faith will kiss you. Why is the father come running? The only reason why the father gone, it is because he couldn't come back on his own. Some people try to fix their lives using their own ways. He couldn't cover up what he's done. There is a father who comes and puts his garment on him, shoes on his feet. Slaves in those days didn't wear shoes because they can run away. He puts ring in his finger, symbol of restoration, restor restoration of his gift. He was back in the family business again. Our father rejoices immensely over a son or daughter who comes back to him. But without the father bringing you back in his directions, you cannot come back. We need the father. And God gave me another incident in the Bible. Uh, it's about what happened in the ministry with Mark, John called Mark and Paul. It is written in the book of Acts, and I'm going to read chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, verse 36 to 38. says, division over John Mark. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, <coughs> let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are, how they do it. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had the part who, who departed from, from them in Pompilia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. So Mark departed from the group. The reason is not known. Paul was discontent, did not approve, was, was uh, um, more or less inflexible, not listening to reason, and disqualified Mark. So Mark couldn't go with him in the ministry journey. Nevertheless, later Mark would prove faithfulness to, to the ministry of Paul. Whatever the reason for the desertion, it is interesting to note that Mark was reconciled to Paul and again help him in the ministry. And I will 
called Second, Second Timothy 4.11. Second Timothy four eleven. It said, "Well, Paul is in the in the jail, and he writes, he writes to to his friend uh, to, um, what's his name um, Timothy, and he says, only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you." For he is useful to me for ministry. So finally, he, he came to understand. <laughs> At the end, we see that uh, he had to come back from the problem to an answer and from loser to a winner. God can do that. It's called come back. So God is insisting in every time that Remember, I'm calling you to come back. Well, this part I'm going to uh, share with you is will be uh, the last part of this message. It's a story about Samson and Dalila. I'm sure that everybody has heard. I'm sure that everybody knows about that story. But there is things that uh, it put in my heart I, w I wanted to share. Um, the story says Samson had a seven lock hair, seven locks. Seven already speaks about <laughs> about God. It's uh, God's number. As long as he kept the locks, Philistines were away. This is what at the time in Book of Judges when Israel was terribly um, 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 defeated sometimes you know, by the Philistines. They were. Uh, and they were they were in war many many years, um, but she deceived him, Delilah, and he was willing to be deceived. Bible says he has told her all his heart. <laughs> see, we can see there how Samson um, took it lightly his his precious anointing. He revealed all the secrets. And uh, he was really um, uh, using the last of the flesh. So his intentions, all things changed for him. And what happened as a consequence? The spirit left him. Um, Samson, as a consequence, loses his eyes, so he, lo he lost his vision. You know, for us, it's the same thing. These days, when we are compromising our ways with the, with the things of the world, we lose our vision. The vision for the plan of God for our lives, um, we lose our prior life, no any more desires to fellowship with other Christians, things like that happen. We lose uh, the praise and worship. So it's very important to be careful not to um, feed those uh, powers of darkness, but to fight. That is what we were called to do. The second, what he lost was his, uh, his freedom. His hands and feet, they, they shackled the enemy. So he became a grounder, a machine who goes around and around and around. Enemy keeps you in a defeated place, for sure. He was making bread for the enemy, feeding, feeding instead of fighting. This mistake done, God knows why he wants me to mention, for it is valuable lessons to consider today. When we 
compromise with the world's standards, we also lose that vision. And I already shared that one. <laughs> we, um, for, sight, for Samson, a comeback started when his hair began to grow. Again, we can read that in Judges 16.22. Then Samson calls to God in Judges 16:28, saying, O oh Lord, remember me, I pray, strengthen me. Just this once, O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance of the Philistines for my two eyes. Bible tells us that the fourth generation will come back and the church is going to be what I said it's going to be in these generations we are called to fight strongly Samson's life is ultimately a story about God's faithfulness in spite of human weaknesses we know, however, that it was God who had allowed what happened to him. And it was God who gained the ultimate triumph against the uh, cruel enemy, Palestines, and their god, Dagon. Now, If you want to come back spiritually or physically or in the family situation, if it is, if you are in your darkest or coldest moments you ever been in your life, you are going to come back if you turn to the Father. That's the condition. I pray. Thank you, Father, for your words. Thank you, Jesus, for you are really the Savior of the world. I pray that keep us focusing our eyes in your commands, in the spirit of obedience, and bring fruit to the glory of the Father, and preach your word with such a um, strong believe like John and Peter bowls boldly they preach your word now that Christmas is just around the corner maybe God is going to touch our hearts and come to think and execute he's asking us to be holy because depends how we fellowship with the Holy Spirit is when he's going to use us mightily. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, that uh, this message, a short message, but uh, it means a lot and it will um, transform every one of us. And consider when you are in in the festivities, you know, but not to be um, so open to things that the world created for, for other reasons. We are different, we have different interests, and we just be, have to be a moderate, celebrating mainly in our heart. Don't forget the birth of our Savior. Thank you for listening. Amen.